part of God's family. Memory text. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. 1 John 3 1. As Christians, and as part of humanity, we were designed by God to take care of His creation on this earth. We were intended to take care of animals, tend to the plants, and raise children to populate the world. In short, we are working for God. In return He blesses us with many resources and gifts. We are to use those resources to teach the gospel to our families, and spread it throughout the world. It is a privilege to live on this earth, but we also have responsibilities. We are part of God's family. Galatians 3:29. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. When the Israelites were called out of Egypt, God called them, His people. Their mission was to be witnesses of the true God, and have His character. As followers of Jesus, we can take part in being His people. What is your image of being part of the family of God? Jesus many times referred to His Father as our Father. If we have the same Father as Jesus, that makes us His brothers and sisters. Jesus came to earth to be part of the human family. Now it is possible for us to also be part of the heavenly family. One day when Jesus returns, the heavenly family and earthly family will be united as one. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Ephesians 3, 14, and 15 we are not products of evolution by chance. We were formed by a loving Creator. We are to reflect His love as family love. Every human being is to be considered a creation of God, as if they were our brothers and sisters. Ephesians 4 29-32 Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you, with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. God is the owner of everything. Psalms 50 10 12 for every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine, and all its fullness. Do not get caught up in worldly possessions and wealth. Everything belongs to God. You take nothing when you die and always remember that one day all the earth will be cleansed in fire. In 1 Chronicles 17, King David wants to build a house for God. But God tells David he is a man of war. He is not given permission to build it. David is granted the request to start collecting the materials and make plans for building. Throughout David's life, this was accomplished with amassing an overabundance of material and precious metals. David calls the leaders for a service of thanksgiving. Who did David actually give thanks to? 1 Chronicles 29 14 But who am I, and who are my people, that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? For all things come from you, and of your own we have given you. The important point here is that no matter what we acquire in life, rich or poor, nothing would exist without God. Live each day remembering that God owns it all. Thank Him and praise Him for the goodness of life. Worship Him in gratefulness. Resources available for God's family. God gives us many gifts, but the greatest one was His Son, Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus is the foundation of all other gifts. Through Jesus we have the gift of salvation. What does anything matter without being saved?
Jesus offers forgiveness, grace, and sustains us in our daily lives. Mark 8:36. For what shall it profit a man, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? If we acquire wealth, fame, and fortune, what good is it? Anything we have here on earth will be gone. If we do not accept the gift of eternal life, then we too will be dead and forgotten. Many worry that they are not able to have nice things that money can buy. God has promised to provide for our daily needs. Philippians 4:19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. When Jesus left the earth, he sent us another wonderful gift, the Holy Spirit. This gift is our guide and comforter. Through the Holy Spirit, we experience spiritual gifts, and can discern truth. We see that God's gifts can bless us with material things, but the greater gifts are spiritual. Responsibilities of God's Family Members With all the gifts that God gives us, what should our response be? Many people believe that doing things like the Ten Commandments is legalism. Is this true of keeping secular laws? No real Christian would ever say that we should break laws like speed limits and laws against criminal action. We keep secular laws to be good citizens. Are we not citizens of heaven? Why then should we do things that go against the Father's guidance? If we find a lost wallet, what is the Christian response? To return it to its rightful owner. Is that legalism because we act the way Jesus taught us? Of course not. If you truly believe that obeying God's law is legalism, then why not keep someone's wallet? We do things because we are to show Christian love in all things we do. If we readily show Christian love to others, why would we treat our Heavenly Father differently? We must also show Him love as well. Wanting to keep His laws is acting like a true member of the family of God. Treasure in Heaven Every day we read and hear about how unstable the world is. Disasters, wars, crime, and diseases. This should show us that life on earth is fragile and fleeting. What is it that really matters? Do good for your fellow man. Worship God and stay faithful. Help spread the good news of the salvation with Jesus. Does anything else really matter? Yes, it is nice to have things and enjoy life. God wants us to be happy. But put your faith, hope, and trust, only on God. Put God first, not worldly possessions. It is not a sin to make and have money. By tithing and making sacrificial giving, your money can be multiplied to help feed, clothe, house, comfort, and offer others the way to eternal life. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew. 6. 19 to 21.